Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about repolarization changes in black athletes, what we know and what we don't know. Let's start with a question. A 26-year-old asymptomatic black basketball player had a pre-contractual medical before joining a team. Which of the following changes should raise concern? A, J-point elevation in leads V5 and V6 with ascending ST segments. B, high amplitude T waves in leads V2 and V3. C, T wave inversion in leads V5 and V6. D, T wave inversion in leads V2 to V4, preceded by J-point elevation and convex ST segments. And E, voltage criteria for left and right ventricular hypertrophy. So we're not going to, for the sake of time, we're not going to have a show of hands, but the right answer is C, T wave inversion in leads V5 and V6, and I'd like to illustrate it like this. This is the ECG of Mo Farah. Most of you would agree that he doesn't have a cardiomyopathy. He has got voltage criterion for right ventricular hypertrophy and left ventricular hypertrophy, and he has J-point elevation in leads V2 to V3 with deep asymmetric T wave inversion. This is a normal ECG for a African or Afro-Caribbean male athlete. Black athletes are an increasing number of uh, athletes worldwide and certainly predominate in the United States, making up 70% of the National Basketball Association and around 80% of the National Football League. They make up 33% of our British Football Premier League. We know they exhibit a higher prevalence of repolarization anomalies compared to white individuals. They also develop more left ventricular hypertrophy that overlaps with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And therefore, the combination of repolarization changes and structural modifications in black individuals often raise the issue of a cardiomyopathy. And what's worrying is that sudden cardiac death is four to five-fold greater in black athletes compared to white athletes. So we really need to put these repolarization changes into context to decide, to decide which ones are benign and which ones represent a potentially serious condition. Here is a data set on 1,800 white athletes and 900 black athletes, which show that black athletes have a higher prevalence of left ventricular hypertrophy, left atrial enlargement, and right atrial enlargement, which we don't worry about but they have a three-fold increased prevalence of ST segment elevation, six-fold increased prevalence of T-wave inversion, and a 12-fold increase in deep T-wave inversion. I'd like to start by talking about ST segment elevation. ST segment elevation is common in black individuals and present in around 66%, and what you see is J-point elevation in most of the precordial leads with concave ST segment elevation, as showed in the black arrows, and you see J-point elevation in the lateral leads and occasionally in the inferior leads as shown by the red arrows. And you will see that the J-point elevation is accompanied by concave ascending ST segments. This is completely normal and is not associated with any cardiac pathology. Let's look at a bigger data set of 1,200 black athletes and nearly 5,000 white athletes looking at the various changes in ECGs and you'll see that black athletes are different to white athletes in several respects. I'm not going to talk about right ventricular hypertrophy or atrial enlargement, but just with T-wave inversion. The prevalence of T-wave inversion in black athletes is 25%. And we don't just find that in Europe. If you look elsewhere, it's true to say that T-wave inversion is more prevalent in black athletes than in white athletes, although there have been a few, there have been a few studies from the US to suggest that the prevalence of deep T-wave inversion may be less so than in European black individuals, and it's important not to lump all black individuals in the same category, and it may be that the African-American blacks that you're seeing have a lower prevalence of T-wave inversion than the uh, Afro-Caribbean individuals that we're seeing in Europe. But what's important to note is that apart from anterior T-wave inversion that you've heard about, around 10% of black athletes have T-wave inversion in the inferior and lateral leads. Now, you'll all agree it's impossible that 10% of all black, black athletes harbor cardiomyopathy. But if you actually take the combination of infralateral T-wave inversion and a wall thickness of more than 12 in a black individual, then 5% of black athletes could be misdiagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. 
If you took the combination of anterior T wave inversion with an enlarged right ventricular outflow tract diameter, then up to 3% of black individuals could be diagnosed with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. This prevalence is tenfold less common in white athletes than black athletes. It's so important to get this right. It's important to work out which changes are physiological and which changes are pathological. You've seen this ECG many times, and I don't want to dwell on this. This is a normal ECG in a black individual. The three points, T wave inversion confined from V1 to V4, J point elevation, convex ST segments, and deep asymmetric T wave inversion in these leads. You see various patterns. Here's reference. This is where most black athletes are. But you see here, you've got J point elevation and convex ST segments in all of these leads that are all normal variants in the black individual, but you'd be forgiven for diagnosing acute myocardial infarction here, Brugada syndrome here, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy here, or any other nightmare cardiac condition here. Why do we think anterior tube inversion is normal in black athletes? There are four reasons. Firstly, they resolve very quickly on detraining. Four weeks off season, here's an athlete who's got T-wave inversion in V1 to V3. Four weeks on, completely gone. That's point number one. Point number two is data from adolescents. Here is data from adolescent athletes, black athletes in the black bars, white athletes in the white bars, and you see that black athletes have more T-wave inversion than white athletes. You'll also see that the prevalence of anterior T wave inversion, inferior T wave inversion, and lateral T wave inversion is more common in black athletes than white athletes, but this issue is much more prevalent in black athletes. So, this pattern of very high prevalence of anterior T wave inversion is present in adolescence. It doesn't just start in adulthood. We've got follow up data of up to 20 years on these individuals. Clearly, when you, die, when you tell someone that they can carry on playing, you've got to look after them and you worry every morning that you'll wake up and one of these people have dropped dead. This is an ECG in someone in 1996 when he was 16 years old showing voltage criterion for left ventricular hypertrophy and the typical repolarization changes in leads V1 to V3. This is his ECG 20 years on and all that's changed that the, the T wave inversion. In, the, in, the, in V1 to v, V3 has deepened, but this chap's structural heart remains completely the same, and he's had so many MRI scans that show no change in his cardiac dimensions. If we actually look at T-wave inversion in black athletes in the blue bars, black controls in the orange bars, and black patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we see that T-wave inversion in the anterior leads is much more common in black athletes than it is in black controls than it is in black patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. We've also done lots of tests in black individuals with T-wave inversion in the anterior leads, including detailed um, genetic studies uh, with large gene maps, and we've not been able to identify any of these individuals with cardiomyopathy. And it's for this reason that anterior T-wave inversion in black athletes is considered normal in the international recommendations. What about the significance of inferior T wave inversion? Here you look at inferior T wave inversion. It's still more common in black athletes than it is in black controls and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients. But what does it actually mean? As things stand at the, mo stand at the moment, this is regarded as abnormal in the international recommendations. But there is room for improvement. Here is data on 3,210 athletes, of which 466 had CMR as well. Five were diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. All had lateral T-wave inversion. Inferior T-wave inversion had a sensitivity and a positive predictive value for diagnosing hypertrophic cardiomyopathy of 0% in black individuals, whereas it had a sensitivity of 100% in black individuals and a positive predictive value of 8.3%. Based on this, I would say that inferior T-wave inversion is an equivocal finding on its in isolation in black individuals and does not necessarily suggest cardiac pathology. What about lateral T-wave inversion? Here is a data set on 155 athletes with deep T-wave inversion in more than two contiguous leads. These individuals were investigated comprehensively with ECG, echo, exercise test, and halter monitor. And the diagnostic yield for cardiomyopathy was 45%. That's really, really high. But why was it high? There was something very specific about this very select group of individuals. 
Firstly, 89% of these individuals have deep T-wave inversion in the lateral leads. Secondly, one-third of these individuals had ST segment depression. Now let's look at ECG changes in black athletes, black controls, and black patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy again. You will see that in black patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, lateral T-wave inversion is highly prevalent. So lateral T-wave inversion should always cause concern. What about accompanying changes in these individuals? The gray bars are the HCMs, the blue bars against the black athletes, and the orange bars the black controls. You find that in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, not only do they get lateral T-wave inversion, the T-wave inversion is deep. And there is often accompanying ST segment depression. And that's the reason why the st study by Schnell had a very high prevalence of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that already included athletes that had very ugly ECGs with deep lateral T-wave inversion and ST segment depression, which are always suggestive of cardiac pathology. These are just some anecdotes. Here's an, a professional soccer player who was seen by a, a, a two cardiologists, had a normal ECG, had an abnormal ECG and a normal echo. His MRI scan didn't show anything that caused concern. This individual suffered a cardiac arrest in his first professional game and was fortunate enough to survive. Here's a second Afro-Caribbean individual with infralateral T-wave inversion that had a normal echocardiogram who was allowed to compete, who also had an aborted sudden cardiac death. I mean, looking at it now with my eyes, he's got very small uh, limb lead complexes, and I don't want you to, uh, to get too excited about this, but for me, this is a rhythmogenic ventricular cardiomyopathy that clearly wasn't picked up. And here is something much more obvious. This is the black boxer with deep tuavisia inversion in the lateral leads who was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. He clearly has more than just T-wave inversion. It's very deep, and he's got ST-segment depression in the lateral leads. What about women? Black women also have a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than white women, 14% versus 2%. Deep T-wave inversion is uncommon in black females, and T-wave inversion in the inferior and lateral leads is not usually recognized in black females. So I would say this is how I would interpret repolarization changes in black athletes. Benign, if you see T-wave inversion in V1 to V4, preceded by J-point elevation and ST-segment elevation, ST segment elevation in any lead, abnormal deep T wave inversion more than minus two point minus two or more than small two small squares in the lateral t in the lateral leads in any male, any lateral T wave inversion in females and ST segment depression, and this is the feeling that I had when I first came to Seattle and I showed the axis deviation and the atrial enlargement and people looked at me a bit strange. But inferior T-wave inversion in black athletes does not necessarily mean pathology. Minor T-wave inversion in black athletes in the lateral leads does not necessarily inv in involve pathology. And if I had to do it all over again, if you've just got one of these in the gray box, you go into normal. If you have two, you go into the red box. So things will develop in black athletes. But the one thing that we all lack, and this is where the Americans and the Europeans need to work together, is that there just isn't enough, there just isn't enough of, of a pool of black athletes that we've followed up for years and years to be able to tell this story, but I'm sure that day's not far. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. This is, this is an individual, this is just, just a, a throwaway comment at the end, in whom I thought he clearly has something wrong with him. Would you all agree? Infralateral T-wave inversion? There are a few nuances here. He got injured. He carried on playing. We didn't find anything on the echo or MRI. During injury, this happened. So I thought I had to swallow humble pie until I tested his father. His father's got hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So that just tells you that we really don't know very much about black athletes. Thank you very much. <coughs>